All right, guys, in this lesson, we are going to create an end-to-end -end sales analysis project, which will be extremely useful for your portfolio. I know that I haven't completed the Pandas tutorial and even the other libraries, but as there are a bunch of things to explain, I have thought that it will be better to combine either tutorials and projects, I mean, work on them interchangeably. And what I advise to you is that you can find and watch the tutorials from other channels if you don't understand or just subscribe to my channel until the lessons are released. I'm going to release the tutorials once a week, but in order to make my channel interesting, I will uh, make some mind-blowing projects for the portfolio. I think that that will be a good choice for me and either for you too. Okay, now we will start our project, but before starting it, I will create a new folder and rename it to the projects. Inside of these projects, I will create a new file and call it sales analysis. Sales analysis. Analysis. And before starting the projects, we will need to install and import the libraries. I have already installed all the libraries but I will give you a short guidance of the way of installing it. You are just going to run the PAP install uh, pandas. We have already installed pandas, we know that, but the additional libraries will be PAP install matplotlib then will be seaborn Seaborn, and we could even install what? Uh, daytime library. Install daytime. I am not going to run this because I already installed them and I will just comment them out. Uh, instead, I will import all of them by typing the import pandas spd. Then I will import my matplotlib library. Plot as plt then I will import the seaborn cns these are the alias and from daytime I will import what date and I will run it all this code matplotlib we have a syntax error here run it again and it should run this cell okay we have imported all these libraries and now i will try to read the data set which is located inside of this data folder here after going one step back this sample superstore super no this one superstore cells and in order to read it i will type in the pd read csv or this is the excel file we will type in the excel and inside of the data folder, while I'm going one step back data folder, we will type in the name of the file here. Name of the file. And then call this data. Wait for a bit because it might it is a big file. Uh, okay, it has imported our file here. And uh, as a quick introductory, I will just type in the df shape in order to know how many rows and columns here. You could see it has 51,000 rows and 21 columns here. You could even see some of the columns are not visible here. And we could even type in the columns in order to uh, see them. Columns, it will be necessary for us while working. And then uh, we can even just check if there are some null values inside of our data. In, you can see none of these columns has null values and we don't have to use the drop the method in, in order to drop them out. Okay, now we are ready to do what? Plot these uh, column some of the columns here with their values here first I will start with uh, by printing what the product name and sales here if I just uh, scroll it a bit right we could see we have a product name here and sales 
and if I want to print them out, I will first just try to group this product name and sum all these cells values uh, related to the, their values here in the product name. We will just group them. In order to group them, I will type in what? df group by group by and then the name of the column, what do we want to group by? Product, product name, right? And if I just click shift enter, nothing will print it. But if I uh, type in the sum here, because this sum is the aggregated method, which is corresponds to all this numeric data, it just prints and extracts all the numeric columns for this uh, grouped by column here. You can see it has sales, quantity discounts, all of them are just the integer or numeric data here. I can even type in the D types here and check. You could see uh, some of these columns has float or integer and uh, data types here. I will cut them. And now we will need what this sales column here in order to um, import this, extract this sales column, we will need to add it like that sales click shift enter it will print it out as a series here but if I just you could see the product name this is the product name and this is the value sales value it just prints it out as a series but if I want to um, create it or uh, visualize it as a data frame I will type in the PD uh, I will just create a data frame from scratch here the new data frame and click shift enter you could see <clears throat> we have uh, just printed out it as a data frame here. But what I want here, I want to print out uh, only the rows which are greater, uh, only the top five rows. Uh, I mean, uh, starting from the descending order, all the top five uh, rows which have made uh, huge sales here. In order to do that, I will just define the variable here and call it product name, product name, uh, like cells equals to this data frame and concatenate what sort values to this product name, product name, cells, concatenate sort values. We could even type it from here, but I like to work uh, neat sort values inside of the sort values we will type in the buy cells we will sort them based on the cells column ascending will be false because we want to print them in a descending order order and then save it like in place equals to true all right if i click shift enter it will sort them in a descending order just and print this variable out product name cells you will see it will just sort them from the huge highest to the smallest one but we want the five rows here we don't want all these rows we could even either can just extract it from here by typing the five or just by typing the head like five here and delete this one you will see the result is the same but I will just still keep this one and delete this head and if I want to get rid of this um, error here you could see that it has just given notice that numeric only will be used and if I just try to type in the true I shall think I think that it should be disappeared. Yes, it has disappeared. Now we are ready to plot it or visualize it in a bar form. In order to plot it, I will type in the PLT. I will plot it with the Matplotlib library um, by typing the PLT bar bar, and the first parameter will be the product name, this index, and the second will be this column here. But in order to access them. I need to 
just type in the if I, I just try to access this index and check it here you could see we could it access it like that and uh, this works the same for this one too we will just type in the product product name name uh, this product name sales sales index index will be the first uh, value and the second one will be again this variable put name and the column name the column name will be this one because this variable just access all these functionalities here that we have defined we shouldn't just uh, type in the DF or something like that we are just want to print out the or visualize the data which is corresponds to this data here and then we, if you will just click on shift enter it will print out the chart here with this messy data here but I will I can even rotate uh, these labels in order to do that I will type in the PL T X ticks X ticks and type in the rotation keyword equals to vertical I sent it should uh, rotate them change the positions or rotate yes you could see it has rotated it and now I can even um, give the size to the x sticks by typing the size equals to 8 if I want to make them a bit smaller you could see we have done it and we could even get rid of this list by typing the plt show yes and if we want we can just even decrease the size of this chart by typing uh, plt figure plt figure figure uh, inside of the figure we will type the fix size equals uh, the width will be or the highest height will be five and the width will be three the height height is the three and the width is the five here you could see we have uh, made it small and in the same way we could even do what we could um, visualize a segment um, segment column here you could see this is a segment column but based on the profit how we should do this first I will just again copy this code here because this is almost identical and instead of the cells I will type in what profit because we are going to work with profits I will click on the control and type in on these cells here this one and this one delete them and type in the profit here and the profit uh, column will be extracted here you could see in the, if we just look at the columns here we do we have a profit yes we have a profit and the segment here and if I just type instead of the product name I will type in the segment here I can even before um, visualizing it or sorting them I can print both of these columns here by typing the segment and the profit profit you could see we have these kind of uh, columns here and now if I click on shift enter it just grouped this profit based on this segment here now I am open to do what visualize this how should I visualize it Mm, I will need to type in the PLT or I can even visualize it with the Seaborn library the Seaborn uh, how we should visualize with Seaborn we will just type in the SNS bar plot and then X will be the first parameter will be the segment like the segment and the second will be the profit will be the profit right and the data from where we do we are from where we are going to extract it from this variable here just 
we should define it data equals to the variable itself here and if I just click shift enter it will print out the error y it will say that couldn't interpret input set segment because segment is the index value and by SNS CA born just does not count it uh, it just should count it as a um, I think as a column here if I type in the reset index shift enter you could see it has visualized it we could do what make um, or remove this line here by typing the even plt show should be removed here yes 